Right, how's it going guys? So today I'm doing the Jaguar XE 2 litre diesel engine, engine and engine service. So what I'm doing is probably what they'll call an interim service. So I'm not going to do the oil footage service change. I'm just going to change the oil. Um, I've had this car for a few months now and just for my own, you know, um, for my own sort of satisfaction really. I would rather do some some of these oil changes in between by myself, knowing that I've used the you know the right oil. Um, I bought it from a garage where they say that they have done the service, but you know garages. I don't know what oil they really used. Um, some of them were just used maybe not the right spec because this wasn't a Jaguar Land Rover garage. It was just a normal like you know um, like uh, pretty much even Hosha garage. So anyway. Um, the reason why I'm deciding to do this oil change as well is because Jaguar on its own does recommend oil changes every 20,000 intervals, 20,000 miles. Uh, for me, that's a bit too much. Uh, I believe that oil by that time, it would have lost its viscosity, um, you know, and that's one of the main reasons why I feel, I think that, you know, a lot of Jaguars, especially with the ones, Jaguars and Land Rovers, the ones that have that engine, have had issues with their timing chain, stretching, snapping, um, you know, losing their timing really or skipping, you know, on the gears, skipping. Um, I've decided to do it every 10,000 miles. Um, I'll do what I'll do is I'll do the 10,000 mile by myself. I'll do the oil change. And then towards the 20,000 mile uh, interval, I will t send it to, you know, the professional garage, you know, so that at least it stays on the record as well, that it's been maintained. Um, so I'll do the full service, you know, air filters, um, the oil filters as well. Um, yeah, the pollen if if it really needs 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 changing the pollen filter, but I can some of these things I can do myself. They don't really need. They're not really major. You can just change your old old air filter. You can do it at home. So I'll probably just stick to interim oil changes instead. It's cheaper, saves money, and then the rest I can just do it. You know, I can buy the re and then keep the receipts as well. Um, so yeah, um, what I decided to do is also document every service that I do for myself. So I've got this. Um, uh, service schedule maintenance book um which is quite important for me to document every time i do it by myself as this might not be on the system um so, so as i said um with the oil change at twenty thousand miles i think the oil would have lost its viscosity therefore the chain in an engine especially the time um the, the the engines that have a timing chain they do you know the chain itself the gears as well they all stay lubricated by the same engine oil that lubricates your own engine so but if 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 there is more friction because of the you know the viscosity of the oil has sort of like you know deteriorated over time you are risking more friction on your chain more heat which can cause you know the gears as well uh for the metal to like you know sort of like get eaten out and then that could lead to stretching easily you know um probably skipping you know they might skip this timing as well because there's, there's more slack Within the chain after it stretches, um, I think that if if the more the more I service the car, the more at least the chain stays lubricated, and the longer I have, you know, with um, the longer I have the long the longer life I have with 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 the chain, and the risk of it snapping might be reduced as well. Um, yep, yeah, that's the point there for the guys who have the engine engine. You might want to make sure that you you do regular services. Um, it's sort of like a preventative um thing that I, I'm, I'm just going to be doing if it does snap then it does but at least i've tried to you know prevent it from happening um so what i've done i showed you the vehicle service uh, book that i'll be using now the oil is very crucial um the recommend oil for for for, for the engine engine is the castro but it's hard to find it's the branding castro anyway but what you need what's more important is a cow 30 and you need to make sure that it meets the standards, you know, the S S T J O R uh 035007. As long as it meets that standard, I think it's 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 at the same like you know stuff like you know the um, level in terms of quality and stuff. But I wouldn't go for the cheaper brands like Halfords, um Petronas, um that's how it's that's 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 what it is because i don't know how long the viscosity lasts in those cars i'll just i'll just i'll just rather stick to either shell or castro because i believe 
Shell was quite good, you know, in terms of like um, the quality, oil quality, and yeah. So yeah, um, so yeah. Initially, I had decided to be a bit lazy with myself. So what I did was I went to Halfords, got one of these oil sucking, um, oil sucking gun, really. Um, but then I thought to myself, if I do suck out the oil, yeah, it's going to be easy. I don't have to go underneath. But am I actually going to take out? Oil? First of all, am I going to take out? all the oil i don't know second of all if there's any dirt or you know micro you know micro bits that might end up being stuck at the, at the bottom of the oil pan and then if i put fresh oil i don't think i've really done much of a job if there's still bits inside that needs changing so i've decided i'm just going to jack the car up and i'll do it from underneath so that's what i'm going to show you how to do it um i'm just going to warm the car up first uh just make sure that the oil is a bit like warmish i think about 50 degrees celsius that should work um then uh, yeah then we'll take it from there let's get you outside so i forgot to mention this is another ring that i'll need because once i open up the um the bolt from the sump um the rubber that's on it is likely going to be squished from you know the previous tightening so it's always good to get a replacement get a new one um when you put it on just lubricate it a little bit with a bit of oil so that it doesn't you know whilst you're tightening it doesn't like sort of create friction and break the rubber so yep let's go outside so what i'm gonna do is I'm letting it run for a little bit for about five minutes just to get the oil a bit warmer and then, then yep take it from there jack it up and then take it from underneath so i've let it run for a bit now um what i'm gonna do is use that um jack put it on this underpinning over here um, get some extra stands for both sides and then lift it up and I'll show you the bolts for the undercarriage cover so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the back screws because there's a bit extra there but then there's, it's just unnecessary so I can still get access to the sun from the back so I'll do that so yeah underneath we've got a few bolts here one two actually quite a lot more than I expected or wanted to to do with but it's gonna be done someone's gonna do it so I'd say about nine or ten bolts underneath right so now that we've got both sides raised up what we need to do now is open up the bonnet get to the front bit Right, it's always important to take the oil cover off. So that way we're gonna create. See that smoke a bit, it's smoking a bit. That's because the oil is a bit warm. And what you wanna do is put this to the side. I normally put it over here, just in that hole over there. Yeah. So it's gonna help. Once it's draining, there's no vacuum created from the top. It's just all airflow going down. So what I've decided to do is instead use the, f I mean, unbolt the front um, screws because it's easier, it's better access to the to the sump itself. Um, not from the back. I had used another vision YouTube to sort of direct me from the back, uh, but it seems like there's better access from the front, and you actually do take off less bolts from from the front bit. So. <laughs> The sump itself is a 13 mil bolt that needs to cut. Um, that's what you need um, on a socket, and then the the rest of the undercarriage uh, screws are 10 mils. So yep, let's just do the last bit. That broke off. Okay. Oh, it won't come off now. Anyway, let's get the axis. So now, for this, I'm going to use the torque wrench and 
pretty much what we're looking at is over there. So from the front, you see, it's so easier. There we go. That's a 13 mil bolt. That's it. Just at the front of the left wheel. Um, let's see if I can get the get the angle right. It's going to be a bit skewed over here. So you bear with me. Right, there we go. Right. So I'm going to use this um, torque wrench to sort of break it loose a bit. And then what I'm going to do, just so that there's not much oil spill. I am going to put it just under I can get it yeah I'll put it just underneath there there we go then I'll loosen it a bit I'm not going to take it off fully I'm not taking it off fully so there we go okay there we go it's turning so I'm just going to use this this um cover to sort of hold it and catch it right seems to be a bit loose so I'm going to use the hand okay I'm not going to fully take it out because when I do that it's pouring pretty much going from there I'm trying to go to the other side missing the, the lid so I, what I've just done is I've put it slightly and I'm just directing it all back into the container. So I've managed to so we've got all the oil drained out. So what we need to do now is put the new washer. It ended up getting a bit messy still. Yeah. Right so we need to put this new washer and replace the old one. So I've got the new one, put it in. Then, yeah, so the rest is just about just putting it back. So it's very important when tightening, it's very important when, when you're tightening this um, sun plug off, back on, it's 25 Newton meters that you need. So I'm gonna use this, put it on 25. Now, the thing is, on mine, it only starts from 28, so that's about 3 newton meters more. So, what I'll do is, as soon as it clicks, I am going to stop. Um, yeah, so we're tightening now. So as soon as you hear the click, just stop. Ah, it's still listening. Okay, let's go that way. That's it. It's tight, tight enough. All right. So just to make sure there's nothing in there. Yep. There's nothing. Okay. So time for topping up. Okay, so we're done servicing the Jag. Um, I haven't done the oil filter. Um, that's gonna be easy anyway. I'll do it at some point, but at least the major bit, 
I've done, which is the oil change, um, which I really wanted to do. Um, yep. So looking at doing, just putting back the cover from underneath, so I don't really see much of a point of recording it. Um, since if you manage to get to the point where you've serviced it, there's no need to actually show you, you know, putting it back because you just do the reverse of what you did, what you did when you took it off. So yep, um, that should probably conclude the video for today. Okay, so that got us back to half, which is a bit weird because I took out five liters and I put in five liters, but it came back to half. So what I'm going to do is start it up, go get um, probably a liter of oil, same type, or the Castro. Um, yeah, and then get the one liter of oil and just top it up. See if we can top it. it. So the new oil it sounds smoother now. than before.